Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Mark Lambert of the Thetis Pendulum Trading Group. We're in partners with Anthony Molino. Uh, I've had several questions over the last uh, several days from numerous traders from various groups and so on on how to use uh, market vectors to uh, basically uh, time the market, uh, which, is, uh, which is a nice thing to do because you can actually time the market both in price and time at the same time. Or also look at the other uh, the other ratios, either pricing or timing separately also. I'm going to get right into it. And if, uh, if anybody does want a copy of this uh, this uh, timing sheet that I have, just see me personally and I'll send it to you. It's at uh, graceman 4 eva at yahoo.com. And I will uh, well, I'll be real quick to send it to you. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, when we're looking at a market vector, uh, we're looking at basically a price time ratio, which would be this right here. Uh, the way I use my sheet is you have to input, input the uh, points or pips or whatever it is that you're trading in these two zones right here. And uh, also the amount of bars that it's up also right here. What it does is it gives you a vector. And the vector is basically this right here, which is the uh, sum of the squares. It's, it's the square root of the sum of the squares of these two points right here, or the Pythagorean theorem. And then from here, uh, these two ratios right here basically shoot out to me. These two, uh, a ratio formed by them and also its inverse. And also, when you do input here, I've got my uh, Excel spreadsheet set up so that it, autom it automatically populates the time ratios down here. So you can look at the time ratios that it's also making. And I also, uh, the points also automatically populate here. This right here, I'll save for another time as I uh, start moving forward a little bit in my own trading using uh, various. Uh, Various uh, forms of uh, analysis from planetary harmonics and so on. It's, uh, anyways, I'm going to get right into the vectors. Right? As far as day trading goes, uh, the vectors that you do want to pull on a consistent basis would be off the one minute charts and also the, uh, the five minute charts, which is basically something where most day traders are going to be trading off of. So if you see a harmonic ratio come up, then that's that's where you want to take a trade and really start contemplating closing out longs or shorts, depending on which direction you're trading. Uh, I basically look at both alternating waves and also adjacent waves. These are the adjacent waves. Um, basically, this is the one-minute chart, and as you can see right here, I've inputted the amount of points or pips and bars into this, and also this wing also and you can see that it really didn't make a very clear cut ratio but you also have to look at the five minute time frames also so I went from one minute time frames as you can see proportionally uh, there's, there's a big difference between here and here a lot of times you're going to look at something a little bit more proportional uh, what you do is in this case I'm looking at my other chart right here this is a five minute time frame delineating the exact same swing and when you take a look at the swing, it's the exact same points also that you're inputting, except the timing is different. You're counting five minute bars instead of one minute bars. And when you do that, you get this ratio. The ratio is not really speaking to me about anything at this point in time. But when you look at the time ratio of these bars, it's 1.250, which is uh, basically an octave, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And uh, uh, this is the mi note. It would be one octave plus the mean of 1.250. So that immediately alerted me that this bar right here should be marking a high of this proportion. How low it's going to go from here, I don't know. This could be a major turning point because I haven't done the vector analysis on the hours yet. But basically, the way you do it is you input the points and bars into here. You look at the time and the point ratios. And, uh, and like I said, as far as day trading goes, you want to look at one minute and five minute bars. If you're going to be doing swing trades, I guess you can look at one hour, two hour, four hour bars, maybe even daily bars for a longer term investment. And look at these ratios also, which should also be marking highs or lows also at that point. But that's how I would use it during the day trading. And of course, I never look at just one thing at, 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 at the same time. I would be looking at something more of, uh, also, the first inflection, which is a very, very important point that uh, I know myself and Anthony keep stressing, 
the first reflection that any market makes normally denotes the uh, timing and the pricing of the uh, following swing. So let's say, this, this right here is really important. So I always pull a Fibonacci projection off of that. Uh, the Fibonacci projection, as you can see, was immediately adhered to. Uh, basically stopped and paused at every one of the levels, turned off the 81, came back down, supported on the square root of 5 of a larger projection, and then started moving upwards again from there. And as you can see, this, this morning's projection is uh, being used as a price grid for the market to move up and down through. So when we did finally break through this, we, we do have sort of like a three-wave rule, which I mentioned on the last time. I would count this as wave one, wave two, wave three. Do I want to sit through wave four, which may last several hours, only to go make a nominal high? Uh, no. At this point in time, I'm already done trading for the day. And uh, if I basically get out here, I got chopped out a couple times this morning with one very small loss, one break-even trade, and finally I got up long. Right here at this area, uh, you know, right around uh, 10 15, 10 20 this morning when I saw that I had supported off the uh, spear over five. And I uh, basically got out at the top because I was nearing a 200% projection. And it also was a very strong market vector on a five minutes uh, time frame. So I am now out and flat for the rest of the day. And as you can see, where I did get out seems to be the top for now. Uh, like I said, this is a day trade. So uh, the trade may meander higher overnight or so on, and uh, that's okay. The next morning, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see where the correction has uh, brought us to or if we're still expanding upwards. And then from there, I'll just trade accordingly, uh, basically trying to be as unbiased as possible. And one of the things I'm looking at, too, is uh, why did I pull this projection? As you can see, the market overnight made a nominal high. It's been doing a series of lower highs and lower lows. And I'm not going to get exactly what this pattern made, but basically it's an ABC. And this ABC came down to this point, moved up in an impulsive manner. There are five waves in this, if you really take a good look at it. And then it did a series of overlapping waves down to this point. Or if you want to look at it this way, it also did an ABC down to this point. And then afterwards, it started moving back up again, which just was a really low risk trade here. And it would also have been a very low risk trade here, too, when you look at this larger time frame right here. So, anyways, that's how uh, we do our market vectors. And, you know, I hope that you do find this very useful. And, uh, you know, so Tony and I just keep moving forward. We're learning new things also as we move forward. And we also keep experimenting. We're never going to stop. Um, you know, probably in the near future, I'm also going to start adding market harmonics. And marrying it to all these other forms, also at the same time, hopefully making a well-rounded system to uh, to look at Fibonacci projection, market harmonics as far as pricing and timing, and uh, you know just uh, adding the vectors and so on, and see if we can basically. Uh, I don't want to say crack the code. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but uh, if we can get to areas and time and uh, high probability, then that's that's what we're looking for. So uh, with this said, you know, God bless and uh, Godspeed, good trading day, and I uh, hope to see you again soon.